Jacob Navin is a 21-year-old man with autism who goes under many aliases. He's an aspiring game developer, amateur artist, and former YouTuber of nearly 17,000 subscribers. He's also a serial emotional manipulator, suicide baiter, porn addict, and child groomer who predominantly hangs around and actively seeks to associate himself further with children. Given these traits, he's an active threat to the communities he lurks within. The goal of this video is to bring to light information that my associates and I have spent the duration of an entire year gathering by speaking to former friends and victims of his, as well as speaking to Jacob himself. Information that is for the most part out of public view since Jacob deleted nearly every profile of his, and given Jacob's tendency to try to use the flagging system to remove content, talking about his past actions, I would encourage others to re-upload this video, as I believe at this point the best thing to do in regards to this case is to help potential victims stay informed. However, I feel there are a few points I should address before I get into the specifics of everything he has done given my connection to this case. There will be timestamps in the description of this video to skip past this if you are understandably only interested in the direct facts of the matter. I've personally been involved with the Naven case for about two years now, and essentially from day one I've been planning on making an expose detailing the information on this case. And as many people associated with me know, I've consistently failed to deliver on that. I won't lie, it was primarily laziness and a feeling that it was ultimately unnecessary and would do nothing that kept me from making that a priority of mine. After Avocado's post detailing the facts of the case known at the time, Jacob's reputation was completely destroyed within the small groups he was entrenched in. He was such a laughingstock that whenever his name was brought up in public, there were people to remind him of his actions and alert others of his pedophilia. So that, on top of long work weeks at the time leaving me drained, and an overall hectic living situation, I just didn't deem it a necessity. However, I have kept a close eye on everything going on since my involvement began, and about half a year ago an event happened within Jacob's sphere of influence that changed that perception. I'll explain more in depth when it becomes relevant in terms of everything Jacob has done. However, in response, we all came to the agreement that we have to work to put this to an end. When Jacob was initially outed as a pedophile, the people involved failed to file a proper police report with his local police department, opting to instead file a report with the overworked FBI tips website. I wasn't initially aware a proper police report was never filed despite finding Jacob's town effortlessly as he put the name of it within one of his games, but I went in assuming one was filed given there was other adults involved in this case. One of my associates was able to contact his mother, but she never did anything to prevent Jacob from speaking with minors and never contacted the authorities herself. Jacob even admits in an interview the following year that he hasn't been completely transparent about his actions. After the second incident happened, we filed a proper report, hoping that even though so much time had passed since things originally occurred, that he could still be brought to justice. Since proper investigations can take ages, and the fact that both accounts involved in the initial incident are long deleted, we made the decision to largely stop talking about Jacob in the hopes that it would make him brazen enough to post publicly again. However, given how much time has passed since then, we concluded that they are not going to do anything, and we've sat on our laurels long enough. For the sake of the victims, this needs to be addressed. That's why, after so much time passing, I still deem it necessary to get this out there. It wasn't until Jacob began uploading videos to his YouTube channel that he gained any sort of popularity. He began uploading videos about cartoons, video games, and for some reason Hitler, including one where Hitler fawns over baby pictures of Jacob, and another where Hitler rants and raves about how people need to leave Jacob alone while professing sympathy for him. A lot of his videos have elements of Jacob's desperation for sex interwoven in them, including a noticeably large mention of porn sites in his content seemingly geared towards kids, craft porn of a Pokemon, and is pointed out to me by an ex-associate of his, an entire video that's essentially an excuse to publicly gloat about looking up porn of a game about elementary students. Jacob ran a DeviantArt account wherein he lusted after Carrie Kruger from Amazing World of Gumball and Spooky from Spooky's House of Jumpscares, both of which are underage characters, as in not even teenagers' levels of underage. At one point in a post, he said that he thought the age of consent should be lowered to 15. However, I will give the context that at the time he posted this, he was 15. It was more of a result of Jacob's desperation for sex. However, this is one of many in a theme that permeates Jacob's content, even before the first incident. Where things really began to take off for him was when he started making content on Undertale and the Five Nights at Freddy's fan game One Week at Flumpty's. He made a series of RPGs dedicated to mixing tons of characters he liked into the world of One Nights at Flumpty's, mainly other Five Nights at Freddy's games along with Riddle School. Jacob started getting involved in various Skype groups and discords surrounding the One Night at Flumpty's fandom, and even managed to become a member of their development team for the fan of survival project of One Week at Flumpty's, back when the game was actually still cancelled. Everything was looking up for Jacob. He was surrounded by his peers, doing what he loved, he had a respectable following, then he ruined all of that for himself within a matter of hours through his sick actions. Given the immature art style of games like One Week at Flumpty's appealing predominantly to kids, these servers Jacob would hang around in would be filled with them. Jacob's position as a developer, moderator, and good friend of the owners at the time, 
gave him a position of authority. Many of these children respected his lackluster work and tried to get within his good graces. Among these kids, he was constantly around. One of these was a 13-year-old boy who will call W for their privacy. W had prior history with Jacob. Despite the seven-year age gap, the two were friends. But even that's kind of being generous. W tolerated Jacob, but was never really that friendly. However, they were still chummy enough to speak regularly and be in the same friend group. They had some inane argument due to Jacob getting upset over mild prodding, as is expected with him. However, it was what came next after the fireworks stopped that really changed the entire tone. W, who, may I remind you, is 13 at the time, confided in their mutual friend, Avocado, that Jacob, who was 18 at the time, had sent him pictures of his penis, posted pictures of his phone screen covered in semen, and had shown W his porn folder. It was also brought to light that Jacob had drawn porn of a real-life early teenage girl and attempted to play it off as a joke. As the gravity of his actions started finally dawning on Jacob, and he realized he couldn't weasel out of this as easily as he normally did, Jacob threatened to kill himself, only to say mere moments later that he was joking about the entire thing. Obviously, this made tempers flare even more, so Jacob decided to try to give his side of the story, attempting to twist every fact in order to garner pity and make himself look flawless, while, ironically enough, confirming everything actually happened. He admits that he showed W his porn folder. He admits that he sent the dick pic to W. However, he claims that W asked for it. Everyone involved directly in this that I've spoken to has said that W never asked. I can't confirm myself given both accounts are long gone. Even if W did ask, there's a seven year age gap between the two. Jacob was 18 at the time, so he should know better. There's no excuse for this. You're a full grown man, even if you don't act like it. Jacob also attempted to justify his actions by saying that W was a horny 16 year old. Jacob continues painting himself as a nice guy and says that W pointing out that he drew porn of a real girl is essentially W being desperate to drag Jacob through the mud. He admitted his suicide attempt was faked. Jacob has a history of pretending to be suicidal one minute, then mocking those suffering from suicidal thoughts the next. His attempt to explain everything away just ended up making things worse for him. Within a span of hours, Jacob destroyed an internet persona that he spent years building up. His entire name was Poison, and despite how desperately he would try to tell the impressionable children still in his thrall that everything his detractors saying are all lies, eventually all but one of them left entirely. Unfortunately, their story is one of the most tragic out of all of those tied to Jacob. Jacob has had a long string of naive kids who looked up to him for his bare minimum skills in Click Team and RPG Maker. However, for one person in particular, it went a step further than just admiration. For the sake of privacy, we'll call her C. There are going to be some people who watch this who know exactly who C is. I'm pleading with you not to post any identifying details about her. In order to show the depravity of Jacob's actions, I need to cover something genuinely monstrous that happened to C. I'm trying my hardest to avoid her name being attached to this for their sake. C was 13 at the time this started, if I'm not mistaken, and she developed a crush on Jacob. And I want to be clear on this though, it, it's pretty normal for younger people to develop crushes on people they idolize. However, what isn't normal was Jacob enabling this behavior. C is aware of the horrible things Jacob's done, but she's blinded by that crush and she has completely rejected any proof brought to her. She's convinced that Jacob is a changed man, despite Jacob not changing how he acts from day one online. C has even gone as far as to break up with her boyfriend who was the same age as her because of this crush on Jacob. This is all especially concerning given Jacob is an admitted pedophile and Jacob's really strange behavior towards C. Jacob has a habit of using Discord bots to hug C and refers to her as his little sister. If you know anything about Jacob, that should be a massive red flag given the fact that Jacob has admitted to having incestuous sex with his own sister. When confronted on why he let this go unchecked, his response was, well, I'll let the words speak for themselves. A young girl in the clutches of an admitted pedophile that refused any help offered was already bad enough. But something terrible happened to C. One of the people that was keeping an eye on Jacob told me C had posted something deadly serious on Jacob's server. Having nobody else to reach out to, she had come to the person she trusted most, Jacob, the manipulative pedophile. It may be hard to take it seriously when I show you the screenshots, but C is a person with a very strange manner of speaking. She's being completely sincere and asking for help in these screenshots. She came to Jacob and told him that she was molested by her father, that she was terrified and she didn't know what to do. Infuriatingly, Jacob and everybody in his server acted like deer in headlights and did nothing to even try helping her. The guy we had in his Discord server to keep an eye on him had to essentially scream at them to convince C to call Child Protective Services at the very least. What did Jacob Naven, the known pedophile, say in response to this poor girl in his group being molested? If I had the chance, I'd take her away 
and adopt her myself. And he started referring to her as his adopted daughter. I should also make a note here that Jacob has admitted to keeping track of whenever this girl is online or not. Then he referred to it in his Discord tagline like being molested is some sort of Twitter campaign. Jesus Christ, I'm at a loss for words on how to describe this. The following day, C posted that she tried telling her mother, and that her mother called her a liar. Then her mom beat her for trying to get help. C jumped out of her parents' car and ran, desperate for any sort of escape from the situation. Thankfully, a stranger at a gas station protected her and called the police, and she was brought to the police station. Then she vanished from the internet entirely for over a month. All of us were horrified at what happened to her. Nobody deserves to suffer like that, to be made to feel like you're some sort of thing to be used. Thankfully, she had somewhere safe to live, but even to this day, she still clings on to Jacob for dear life. We're all worried for her well-being, but ultimately there isn't a whole lot we can do about it, given this is the internet. But... I do want to say something to you, C, and I know it's a one in a million shot you'll hear this, and even rarer that it even gets through to you, but you miss every shot you don't take, so I may as well and try. What happened to you was a tragedy. You did nothing to deserve that. I can't even begin to imagine what you're going through right now. I'm sorry. Some people we love in this world are sick, and they do things that cut us deeply without any regard for how it'll affect us for seemingly no reason. And we end up carrying that pain for the rest of our lives. I may not know how it feels to go through your situation, but I do know what it's like to have a nurse a wound across your heart like that. I know you don't want to believe me because you love him, but Jacob is a person like that. He sees you as an object, like your father made you feel after he abused you. Jacob sees you as a sick fantasy. He's so depraved he legitimately can't answer why it's wrong for a 20 year old to have feelings for an early teenager. When he says he views you as a little sister, you need to keep in mind, he's someone who had sex with his own sister. He's in his 20s, but he behaves like a 10-year-old child. There are a lot of people that worry about you, and keep you in their prayers. You suffered more than anybody should ever have to, and you've barely started your journey through life. Every single one of us wishes we could do something to help you, but unfortunately, learning to cope with a traumatic event is a very personal experience. The only thing I can do is offer you some advice. You need to cut Jacob out of your life before he gets the chance to really hurt you. Please try to think about how he treats you. Think about how immature he is, and honestly tell yourself he's a man to look up to. I know it isn't going to be easy. It's common for people who are hurting to cling to anybody nearby for dear life, just so they don't have to bear through the pain alone. But Jacob can't understand how intensely you're hurting right now. What's between you and him isn't healthy. There's so many people that try to convince you of that. All of them just wanted to help you. You should go back to your old friends. The thing that's more important than anything while you're hurting is to have people you can confide in. Having friends you trust that you can talk about things you're going through can ease that burden you've been forced to carry. They can help you. You just have to be willing to accept their help. Your scars aren't going to heal with time. They're always going to hurt. But as you get older, you'll learn how to deal with that pain better. You'll become stronger for having to carry such a heavy burden. Pressure makes diamonds, like they say. And even if you can't see it now, I promise things are going to get better. But you need to be willing to take that first step before things can start to change. Nobody can make you, but I'm hoping that you're willing to make that choice for yourself. I can't show practically anything given this is YouTube, but I think this picture pretty much speaks for itself. A picture speaks a thousand words and all. Jacob is an obvious danger to the young children he prays after. Not only has he permanently impacted the lives of many, but he's shown zero remorse. Anytime he's called out for being a sick fuck, he always has an excuse. It's always someone else's fault. Jacob is always innocent in his own mind. He hasn't, and likely never will change. What are we supposed to do, given he got away from any real consequences due to his mother playing the autism card? Make sure he can't escape the reality of what he did. He's a truly pathetic excuse of a man, but you don't even need to mock him. Just make sure everywhere he goes he can't outrun his past. Make sure everyone he interacts with knows he wants to fuck kids, no matter how much Jacob bitches and moans about it. This is not harassment. This is quite literally what we do to sex offenders. We force them to tell everybody they meet they're monstrous by nature. If he won't do it, then we'll do it for him. So like I said at the beginning, I encourage anyone and everyone to re-upload this if you have even the smallest reach in any communities he frequents, like Homestuck or One Night at Flumpty's or Five Nights at Freddy's or the like. I'll be leaving links in the description and pinned comment of this video to download links for the video itself and the script for easy reposting. Fuck Jacob Navin and fuck pedophiles.